Ghana is one of several African countries these days that boasts of a democratically elected government. We have a stable democracy and we go to the polls every four years. But there is more to democracy than that. My guest heads a think tank that has the sole purpose of deepening democracy. There's a complex world growing around you. Expectations are growing in leaps and bounds, just like your anticipated return on investment. You demand value and variety in your financial and personal commitments. Your life is based on a dynamic system of goals and achievements. At Imperial Homes, your comfort is what shapes our designs as we go the extra mile to represent you. So when it all comes together, it's your investment. It's your image. It's your life. Choose Imperial Homes. Luxury is our hallmark. Call us now on 0573-899-899 or visit us at www.imperialhomesghana.com. What is it that you would say is wrong with our democracy? Uh, let me just say that indeed uh, every democracy is supposed to yield dividends. It shouldn't necessarily become a flagging, if you like, democracy. Otherwise, it wouldn't really inure to the benefits of the people. I would think that the challenge of our democracy has to do with the way the spoils are shared. And I use spoils here in a pejorative manner, but essentially to suggest that the, the cake, the national cake as it were, the processes of making the cake itself and the decision to distribute the cake itself, there are significant, well, there are dysfunctional, if you like, processes towards achieving those two set of goals, the process of making the cake and the process of distributing the cake. That essentially is wrong with the democracy because for me, I do not understand, for instance, that we pay a tax to a government and all we hear is that, um, or all do we see really, is that you, 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 a lot of patronage politics um, and then wait until the third year in an electoral cycle when projects will be springing up and these projects will be half as deadly done and then at the end of the day um, incur a lot of debts for us. Just to get it straight, so for you a good democracy is one in which what? In which the majority of people have a better way of life? What is a good democracy? How do you determine that it's successful? Ordinarily, I would say that you want to see the, the clear definition or the separation of powers, essentially a, 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 an independent judiciary that does its work well, an executive that implements well, and a parliament that passes laws. But unfortunately, you do not have that type of arrangement. You have a situation where you have an overbearing executive, an executive that introduces bills in parliament and almost, um, you know, equips the majority into line. Hmm. So your concern is that we're not even practicing it properly. Am I correct to say well, that? Well, we aren't practicing that properly. It's only on paper. Yeah, well, it's only on paper. A, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of backdoor arrangements which do not necessarily in your to the collective benefit of the people, but just present personal interest. What do you mean backdoor arrangements? Well, when I see a situation where a, a bill is supposed to be introduced in Parliament, which essentially would mean that the, uh, the people's livelihood would be much better. Mm. And all you hear is that in spite of the relevant opposition that is brought to bear on the bill, or, or, yeah, in, in any case, or any decision in parliament, um, the majority, in spite of the obvious gaps and flaws, would railroad it through parliament. I do not understand how um, petroleum agreements uh, yield close to, I mean, in, in sum of about a billion dollars could be railroaded through parliament overnight when nobody has read significantly understood the details of How those agreements. How do you agreements. know that? Because How do you it know happened. That? How do you say nobody has because read it? Because it happened. Those? I mean, the, no, no, the, that, these, that nobody these, has read it. Well, when I How say nobody has that? read it, it yes. could be metaphorical. What I mean is that... They don't see, show a knowledge they, of it. They don't show a knowledge of it. In any case, the fact that these things are rushed through Parliament, it's worrying. If at the committee stage, you have people who may have seen that, 
there isn't enough evidence when the debates are held that these things have been subjected to scrutiny. How that different is, is this from elsewhere? Is, it, is this not usual that in many democracies the majority simply carries the vote within the legislature? That Ghana is not unique in that respect? But it's informed, it's informed voting. You see, the, what we need to understand here, and I probably want to take back, uh, I, do not, I do not subscribe to that view, that because these things happen elsewhere, possibly mature democracies, it's we okay should entertain happening. them here. In any case, they could afford a little dent on an economy. I mean, a, 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 I mean, a dent on an economy makes significant impact than a little, if you like, political arrangement that makes a bill pass yeah. through yeah. in the U.S. Congress. You are saying essentially say that we cannot afford we, to make the mistakes that others shouldn't. make. We shouldn't what afford they're. that. Yeah. I mean, look, there are 23 uh, oil-related contracts. Yeah. Only seven of them were seen to have gone through parliament. This cannot be done, or this shouldn't be the case for a flagging, if you like, a young democracy. Why is that the case? Why, well, why because they have vested it? interest. They have deep vested interest. They are not interested in allowing the processes to work. That's essentially the case. I was going to go on to the point about why people, why democracy may not be yielding the necessary fruits for our people. You see, it's the essence of state capture, where decisions are taken at the center, actually at the heart of the executive. Now, to the extent that decisions are not decentralized to the local level, is essentially what we see in the fact that people in the districts and essentially local governments seems to be collapsed in terms of sanitation management, in terms of clean water that people have to uh, take, and indeed in terms of whatever business decisions or business activities occur at the district level. Everybody looks up to Accra. We will come to the things that you see as the shortcomings, but my interest is in the think tank that you head, Imani itself. Often you're accused essentially of simply being an arm of the opposition, of, of, of existing to make it difficult for government, essentially to make it unbearable. What do you say to that? Well, first of all, I'll say that the accusations uh, appear to be true only because the opposition appears obviously to be in perpetual slumber. Um, they're, they're sleeping. So it's people find it difficult to understand why you who do not have a stake in an election as in standing for an electoral mm. position mm. would be subjecting the government's programs and projects to the rigorous test of value for money analysis vested interest analysis and then well as it were use the results or publicize the results which is what our think tank does essentially the way, that you have almost sort of taken up the role of the opposition i mean well it, it is if, interpreted as if that. that is the way it comes across we do not apologize and let me just say that in any democracy mm. the government does what it does to survive the next election mm. and the government employs enough praise singers so if you're a civil society actor and all you do is to shower praises you become redundant. But that does not mean that you don't offer rare praise. Does government do what... anything? Do you ever feel that there are good things that government does? What is positive about our democracy? What is positive about our democracy is that when the rot is detected, um, all parties seem to come together to say, well, this is not right. And we think this is the way to go about it. We do not fight. We do not trade blows. Not even in our parliament. We don't do that. Um, but therein lies the hypocrisy of the Ghanaian as well. Because you see, uh, at the end of the day, we say, Famanya may give it to God. Can we solve it this way? We are not brutal. Occasionally, there have been flashes of excellence. You see, during the last electoral election petition, you saw how hot the electoral commissioner became. For the first time, there was a confrontation of what, it, what the, the, the God nature of public service. It was untouchable. It was untouchable. And you're saying and to the extent that the last that election in Ghana, we, we essentially began to touch the untouchables. Exactly. When the dispute occurred. And to the extent that we can do a lot more of that mm. to confront the status quo mm. with reasoned mm. debates and reasoned arguments and within the confines of the rule of law, that will become 
a feather cap, a feather, uh, a, well, it could a be feather significant in feathers in the cap yeah. for Ghana. Do you worry about the suggestion sometimes that your actions sometimes almost sort of border on rebellion and sort of undermining the status quo? Not quite. You see, cockroaches do, do, do not do, do, like... Cockroach, cockroaches in the dark usually do not like light. So once the light is flickered, they, are then they, they become uncomfortable. I'm not saying politicians are all cockroaches. What I'm just saying is that perpetually the politicians have kept this in the dark. But while they stay in the dark, there are significant people who are out there who ought to be told that there must be processes through which light ought to be shined. I occupy that position and I suspect that that is what is responsible for this uncomfortable, nothing at all, absolutely nothing we have done in the 10-year in the existence of Imani has proven to be, uh, could, could be cited as subterfuge. Or at all. Was, Not at all. Why do you think that is the case, though? It appears like it's either you're either for us or you're against us. And if you criticize us, you're the enemy. What is that? That is where the politician leaves. So the politician is interested in the verbose language, in the fact that uh, I can do the low-hanging fruits for you. Um, the politician is interested in pressing his own interest in staying in power mm. and doesn't want to do much because the more they do for you to realize that you actually deserve more, you start asking for more, which Isn't they can that deliver. is a cynical view? No, it's not. It is not at all. That is why our elections are reduced to issues of who is more corrupt than the other, without details. The last election, by the way, was the only election, probably in a long while, probably in three decades, where you realize that civil society pushed the agenda of free education. And it was Imani that did that. Some people have accused us in the position, the position that we lost the election for the opposition because we brought the issue of free education and the consequences of it and challenged the opposition. But is that but not the, the problem? Point. That's the issue that Imani seems to take on these issues that sometimes would appear to be you know, politically charged issues that are meant for elections or that people see as the role of political parties. Is that, is that not where you but get... David, a, 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 but David, politicians are not islands unto themselves. And to the extent that they bring out some of these untested, if you like, ideas, they'll be subjected by a group of people who are devoted to the idea of having a business plan in addition to a manifesto. So how do we fix it? How do we fix it? How do we, how do we, how, how do we come to a point where, you know, we don't have to have a situation where there have to be think tanks always trying to force them back online, where you don't have to have politicians that are just self-seeking. How do we fix it? Oh, how we fix it, we sit around the table and keep on talking. See, one party has got to understand that this is the this is the, 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 the new dawn, if you like, of trading ideas. Mm. And to the extent that you can muzzle one group, because when you do, several okay, several will rise up. The social media, yeah. the citizen journalism. Mm. Mm. To the extent that there are various avenues through which you can actually be subjected to some rigor. The only thing you have to do is to settle, and, that, and that settlement, uh, that, that part of that settlement uh, uh, w would mean that whatever you want to do, you lay it bare. These are new avenues. These, these, these are new avenues, would you say? Well, they are the, new avenues. They are new, they are avenues the new realities. So when yeah. you are doing an election and you promise that, oh, I'm going to build a railway from Accra to Hamile, mm. and I'll do that because I'll get the $1 billion loan from some group, be ready when the elections come, because some people will ask you, it may not be money. Where is the railroad? Where is the railroad? Yeah. I mean, the fact that there are, you see, the challenge of our democracy, again, has to do with the lack of institutional memory. And I'll give you one example. With railways, under the Kufu administration, there's a group called Compaq that came to promise the Kufu administration $1 billion to construct a railroad from Accra to Hamile. It never happened. Could you believe the same group came back promising six times more to Atta Mills, may so rest in peace, to do railways in the country without questioning why the one billion did not come in the first place, went ahead, 
They didn't deliver anything. So we, so are, the poor poor we are poor leaders. We are leaders who are busily pressing the political interest of trying to perpetuate themselves in power without showing significant results for it. The problem is, is they the are point. consumed by the political office. They are consumed by the political office and to the extent that there is no coherence in some of the things that they also do, yeah. that is the bane of our politics. Yeah, no queries. So which brings me to the issue of think tanks and, you know, civic duty. Yes. And that sort of thing. Yes. Uh, I mean, you say, and I find it interesting that, well, we have to continue talking. I mean, in a sense, you know, there's so many talk shops in Ghana. There's Good. a lot of talk. Everybody knows Good. what's wrong, but Good. nothing happens. Have we not talked enough? First of all, let me just backtrack a bit and say, think tanks are supposed to be second-hand dealers in ideas, depending on how they do it. That is another matter. We think that we should be activist think tanks. But you are right. There's been a lot of talk and there's no action. Which is why some of us within the think tank fraternity decided to also start pressing the issues or pressing the buttons of pressure groups. Is that Occupy Ghana? Occupy Ghana. How are you linked to Occupy Ghana, by the way? I'm a founding member. You're a founding member of Occupy Ghana. Ghana. We, we seek, by the way, the, through Occupy Ghana, mm. to press public interest litigation mm. as another arm of asking for delivery of service from the public servants. Occupy Ghana essentially takes, you hope, will take it from talking only. Yes, to, to demanding action. And demanding action. And in the existence of Occupy Ghana for mm. just about two, three months, mm. there's been significant results, six months, I should say, mm. there's been significant results. Like what? The Auditor General, yeah. for the first time, has been challenged to perform his duty of surcharging people he reports. He has not surcharged anybody. He's not surcharged significant so number of no. people. He will tell you he surcharged a few people, mm. but those are little fries. The point I'm trying to make is that so you have not gotten anything done. You, you essentially you've taken him on, but nothing has come out of it. No, because there's a 14 day ultimatum which expires, I think, in two days or so. And then what will you do if he does not? What will you well, do? Well, he's been that? taken to court. I mean, in, we, we are a nation of laws. Yeah, Once yeah. the Supreme Court says yeah. this is what you need to do, yeah. but even before the case, yeah. the, the and court, what if the court says that he's fine? Then we leave it, but then we find another route where we take on his own report, look for those individuals, and send them press civil cases in the court yeah. to recover the loot. Yeah. By the way, even before the court decides, or before the matters are brought before the court, yeah. the president of the country has, and I think it's, 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 it's in his interest, and we need to applaud him, yeah. has also issued a statement to the Auditor General, I will no longer tolerate you writing me a report. The finance minister in his budget statement, I've forgotten the paragraph, cited that as well, that from now we would ensure that the reports of the Auditor General do not become a, rehears a matter for rehearsals and for public ridicule. And this is, this is, you would attribute this to the activities of Occupy Ghana? Essentially, 99.9%. .9 yeah. What do you want the Auditor General? Let me just come to the issue itself as we wrap up this interview. I would like to focus specifically now on, on that issue with the Auditor General, the Accountant General, all these major, if you like, state you know, institutions that you're, you're, you're focusing on. What are you seeking to achieve ultimately with the, the, the pressing the Auditor General? First of all, good governance. Yes, I but what say. is he supposed to have done right? What is not, oh, well, not the, being done right? The Auditor General is constitutionally mandated to not just report cases of infractions, misappropriations, uh, maladministration, or malfeasance. What he needs to do is to, in most cases, surcharge people he is identified as perpetuating the crimes, if you like, that I've described uh, right now. When you say surcharge, what you're saying surcharge is that he must recover money. Recover the monies. Right. It's very important. Right. And apparently, nothing significantly has been done for... Well, we decided that we wanted, uh, we wanted evidence from 2002. Right. What he brought to us were a motley few cases which are which border on administrative infractions nothing substantial so he has not but been in so that period yeah. we've had significant amounts of millions even not billions being billowed into the skies and i think that in itself is an infraction so you want and to hold him accountable hold him accountable and by extension ask him to surcharge his own colleagues 
probably the controller, probably the AGs department or any ministry at all that is seen to be perpetuating, if you like, a cancerous mm. mor morphism. Can you see that happening? I would think that we've started the journey and to the extent that the Auditor General has responded, initial, the initial response was go to hell. It's none of your business. But then when we confronted them with the evidence and the facts and the reasons of which, then they came back, actually wrote a confidential letter to us, asked for confidential meetings, and now we say, we don't like what you've even written to us confidentially. Okay. We're taking you to court. Do you want to see more Ghanaians do this? Or is this something that you're quite happy to just do as a think tank and, and hopefully achieve something? Do you need that this is, 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 goes beyond your own specific activities? Well, by the way, these actions, some Ghanaians have taken actions that precede Occupy Ghana. It's the only difference here is that this is a group. You remember the case of the Pan Latrine? Right, where somebody went to court to, to essentially say they are banning the AMA, the uh, metropolitan authorities have got to ban pan latrines. There's also a recent case where uh, a, a, a member of the public took the, the Ghana Education Service to court, I think, uh, that they should be paying, uh, was it the government, that they should be paying the amounts that were due them from the consolidated mm -hmm. fund. The court ruled in its favor. So the point being, the point being mm. that individuals are already doing it, mm. but now we want a coordinated mm. approach, mm. and that hopefully will yield to many more individuals taking action by themselves. Finally, Mr. Kuju, would you say that our democracy is being deepened? Are you happy? What's the balance sheet if I asked you? Well, see, to the extent that this democracy, with all its frailties, allows citizens like myself and the num numerous, uh, mm. the number of them, mm. who can call into a radio station and challenge an, uh, an assertion by a minister to the extent that the president can and would say that I will no longer make promises of ending darkness and light. And failing to keep my promises. And failing to keep promises. To the extent that everybody can have a say in that democracy, I think we are already on the path to yielding that result. I think the only thing we need now is for all governments to stop pretending to be taking care of everybody and then Absolutely. allow everyone to have a stake in the economy at the decentralized level. And that, will start, that I believe, will be the beginning of the real deepening of our democracy. Thank you. Pleasure. I appreciate you coming. Thank you.